And uh, just to let you know, uh, Brian, he also uh, serves on our uh, prayer team, correct? Yep. Also uh, as an usher greeter. Uh, so sometimes after service, uh, maybe some of you know that he's actually helped. So when people give their life to Christ, he comes in the, uh, the back room and uh, gives directions, pray, and uh, leads those people. Uh, also, he does evangelism. So he and I have been out uh, before sharing the gospel, going door to door, different places. So I definitely uh, love this brother. I'm excited to know him. He's also an author. Wow. You guys didn't know he has his uh, own book. Uh, and other things. So, fancy, fancy. I you. <laughs> so, but I just uh, want you guys to hear Brian's testimony. I just know it's powerful. You guys are going to uh, just feel basically the presence of God. But I'm, uh, without further ado, Brian Holmes. Um, well, if you're, so the inside of me, there's a little bit of a preacher. And so I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try just to share my testimony. Um, you know, if, if you're not familiar with what a testimony is, it is your account of how God has moved in your life. So we've all got that. You know, we've all got our history. And no one can ever take that away from you. You know, so the enemy's going to come later, and the world's going to come later, but no one can ever take away what God did in your life to bring you to this place. Um, and, you know, and it really, there's, um, it's powerful. Your testimony is powerful. Amen. So if you haven't already thought of it, think about what your testimony is and, and reaffirm that. Um, so my testimony. I was born and raised in Pinellas County. I'm one of the rare people that actually was born and raised here. There's a few of us. Um, I was born and raised uh, Catholic, baptized as an infant, and was brought in the Catholic Church, went to Catholic Church every Sunday, went to Sunday school, was in a Catholic school for a lot of years from like kindergarten to eighth grade, and I was a pretty good kid, I would say, for the most part. Um, I got into a lot of mischief, but it was mostly just mischievous kid stuff, nothing too illegal. Uh, that happens later in my testimony. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I, I, so I'm thankful for my parents for putting me there. They weren't devoutly Catholic, but they wanted me primarily just get a good education. But I'm thankful because the seeds of faith were planted early on. Um, although I thought, I always thought I was missing something. So I, I one of my next, next door to us, um, a family moved in, and then that kid became one of my best friends. And he went to public school his whole life. And I was like, oh, it's so cool over there. I'm over at this, you know, I'm wearing this uniform, a small class of 30. Um, so I thought I was missing out. And that began a journey. I'm like, oh, when I get to high school, I'm going to go to a public school. And so I'm like, I don't want to go to a Catholic high school. I want to hang out with the cool kids. And that led me down, like, a long journey. Um, I quickly got in with the wrong crowd. That friend was a year younger than me, so I went to this, I was in a class of 30, and I went to a high school class, you know, a new public school with 1,600 people, and I went to Osceola, if you're, if you're around here, um, and got in with the wrong crowd. I was doing drugs. Um, there was a lot of, like, gang affiliation type stuff I was involved with. Um, yeah, I was just living in rebellion, completely disobedient to my parents. They'd grab me, and I'd sneak out and go out anyway. Um, and they didn't know how to handle me. And it was really a lot, you know, my uncle describes that as my dark years. Like I would just walk by them in the living room and not even lift my head up. And I was just like in this cloud of like, um, I think I was high like the whole day for like three years. And, you know, I was doing all kinds of stuff. Like I said, it was hanging out with drug dealers and all kinds of nonsense. And I eventually got arrested and it happened in a way where I actually felt betrayed by like the closest friends that were with me, whether they intended it to happen that way or not. Um, I still don't know. They claim that. But I was arrested. My parents bailed me out. And I realized I couldn't trust them. And so I decided that I was going to get my life back on track. Um, the Lord was speaking to my heart. I didn't know it at the time. But I ended up um, getting back on track. And... 
Um, I got right with my parents and started to rebuild that relationship. And I just started getting good grades in school. I started, you know, working a lot and just staying out of trouble. And, you know, it, everything was good on paper. Like, life was good. Um, I was doing all right. Um, got had a new girlfriend at the time and everything was good. But I still felt like something was missing. Like, there's something... Everything is good, so I don't know why I feel like something is missing. It's weird. Um, but I remember I was driving around one night, and I was crying out to the universe, like, what is missing? And um, I, felt, I felt the Lord, like, convict me. Like, I pulled over, and I was just, like, crying. And I remember him speaking in my heart very clearly, Jesus saying, you lost your first love. Mm. You, and, and at the time, I didn't even realize he was once my first love. Um, you know, because I, I believed and I had like some kind of relationship, but it wasn't really a real relationship. And it just hit me very powerfully. And I'm like, wow, I need to give my life to you, Lord. That's what was missing. Like I had all this other stuff. I had money. I was good. My parents, I meant good in school. Um, and so I wish I could say my testimony ends there and it's been good ever since, but it doesn't. So um, I'm stubborn and, you know, we often fall back to old patterns pretty quickly. I didn't go back to drugs or any of that other stuff, but I did graduate and I went to college and um, ended up uh, getting a house with a girl after college and getting engaged. And that ended up not working out. And when we broke up, it was like an eight year relationship that broke up. And so, but I, I felt resolute that it was, it was time to move on. It wasn't working out. And, um, I remember I went out, still out drinking and stuff, um, but, but not driving drunk or nothing too crazy. I, you know, I kind of towed the line between, I'm, I'm good according to the world standards, but I'm still far from God in a lot of ways. And so, um, I remember we were coming back from a bar and clicking the beach friend who was also a Christian who was also not doing the right stuff as well and we both went to a Walmart at like three in the morning and we're just shopping for like food or something and we see a table of Bibles and then a book called The Case for a Creator by Lee Strobel it was about like the scientific evidence for God and I was like cool so I got a Bible and I got that we're like three in the morning we've just been drinking but he wanted one too it's like one of those God moments like God's doing something and I look back now I see God was doing something Wow. Um, and but that book helped me the, the one book so I'm starting to read the word not as consistently as I should have but the other book helped me realize that there's intelligent reasons to believe in God and that got rid of some of the doubts that I had in the back of my mind about it and so that kind of brought me to another level of my relationship with God and I was like I definitely believe in God I know you know and I still I still have my cross on my arm um, I don't know if you remember, it's the Tupac cross, for those of you who are around my age, because that, that was the idea back I had back in high school. I'm drinking and sleeping around and doing drugs and hanging out with gangs, but I have like my idol Tupac on my wall, because he's a Christian, and he can do all that stuff and have foul mouth and talk about murder, and I'm like, oh, so you can be a Christian and do these things, and so I'm completely deceived in my own mind as to what it means to even be a Christian. Um, but these things are slowly, God's working them out. Um, and so it wasn't until a bad relationship uh, ended when I was 30. And so this is a, the first thing happened when I was 17. So this is 13 years later. Um, a bad relationship ended. And at that time, I went back to, how do I get my heart and mind right after this, after this breakup? And I'm like, I'm not going to date anybody. I'm just going to focus on me right now. And I started to get back into a church, and it was the combination of realizing I'd made idols out of all of these relationships that I'd been in. That's, I guess, all part of a testimony for another time. But I basically would put all of my energy and emotions into the relationship I was in instead of where it should have been, God. And so these things are never going to satisfy you the way, the way that God can. Um, you know, the money won't. You know, by that time I was 30, I had already been self-employed multiple times. I was making good money, you know, had a house. Um, you know, on paper, everything was good again. And I'm like, something's missing. And then God reveals it to me again. Yeah, me. Mm -hmm. You keep doing this. 
You did it at 17, you did it at 25, and now you're doing it again at 30. And I'm only, you know, and then it just, like, it dawned upon me, like, how Peter denied Jesus three times. A lot of you are familiar with that. Um, the night of the cruci- the night before the crucifixion. I'm like, I've denied you three times, kind of. I keep, you keep revealing to my heart I need you, and I keep kind of remembering that and then letting you go to the back burner and not, like, giving you my life. Mm-hmm. And so around 30, 31, I said, all right, I get it, God. And I get the wake-up call. And so ever since then, I was like, I'm just going to give you everything. I'm going to stop trying to chase after this other stuff. Um, you know, my happiness is not going to come from wealth or money or my relationships or business or fame or any of the other stuff. Um, it's going to be found in my relationship with you. And and then that began a journey um, that's been amazing for the last 10 years. I mean, um, you know, I got water baptized and that was my that was my first official commitment where I made it public and I gave my testimony. And um, yeah, and then I got ordained like a year later and then started a ministry. And yeah, now I'm doing counseling and stuff. Like you just said, I wrote a book and published it last year. And, um, and now I'm doing like lessons that are being used by like evangelists that are like going out to people all over the Middle East and North Africa and stuff. And so the Lord has been moving. And so in every year, he's like growing me in deeper, deeper ways and showing me that life. Yes, you have to give up your life for him, but it's so much better. Like you, that's when you find life is when you give up your life. And every time he has taken me to a new level, um, I just get more and more fulfilled. I keep being You know, even, and it never stops. Like even this last year, I'm still learning how to give more and surrender more and, and seek his presence more. And so it's, it's been an amazing journey. Um, yeah, for everyone who's still, you know, if you recognize in your heart that you're still trying to find your security in something else, if you're finding your identity in something else, if you're trying to find your fulfillment your satisfaction, your significance in something else, um, you're going to keep chasing it forever. You're never going to find it. God, there's a God-shaped hole in your heart, and he's the only thing that's going to fill it. Amen. Only him, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so that would be, um, you know, my testimony. And so, yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of times, you know, after people share their testimony, um, you know, so I don't know if Matthew wants to do this or I could do it, but if you or TJ wants to do it, even better. Just yeah. asking, yeah, um, if anybody else, um, if you found, if you reflect on your testimony and you see God working in you, but you never fully gave him your life, um, yeah. So you want me to do it or? Yeah, either way, yeah. <laughs> And uh, well, first, man, an awesome testimony. Yeah.